Feel so I'm up in God. Thirty clip at me hella bodies. Spin your hood and kill anybody. If you listen, the medics got him. He ain't dead, but we paralyzed him. Hoodie on, mask on, strap. What's going on, Reaper? You know the vibes. This is Devonte. This is the Reaper Motivation Podcast, and we are coming back to you guys today with some more content. <clears throat> and uh, today, I actually want to get into some love again. Uh, people seem to like these love podcasts a lot. I get some pretty good feedback on those. Uh, so I haven't done one in a while, so we'll touch on it. And today. This is actually an interesting. So a lot of times y'all hear me say I'll get these topics from like, say, if I was had a conversation with somebody or something like that. Right. Or, uh, you know, I was just it just crossed my mind. But this one actually came about. What happened was I was at work and um, I have a friend who he's always saying he's going to come out with some with me and some of my homeboys um, that we kind of hang out outside of work. <clears throat> just a few of us and um he just never has a chance to come out and what, what we ended up talking about was um you know his girlfriend isn't comfortable with him going out and it crossed my mind right and it crossed a, a few of our minds because we was all talking about it it was a few of us that was uh talking and um it's kind of like you know what that's like a common theme Towards the end of a relationship or towards when a relationship's about to start to do a kind of like a downspin, right? And when I say a downspin, I'm saying is 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 in the case of as soon as insecurities start to drive a relationship, they all seem to get ruined. When I say insecurities, I mean as far as you don't want your significant other to go out and enjoy their time with other, you know, their friends. Or you need to keep checking their phones. It got into that too. We started talking about, you know, passwords, the phones and shit like that. So I kind of wanted to touch on it, right? I got a couple points uh, set up. And um, I think this is going to be a very interesting podcast. And uh, unfortunately, I wish you guys could kind of like interact with me on these some of these subjects. I would definitely love to hear your opinions. I think I'm going to put together some type of a thread uh, for like a blog or something like that. I'm gonna get back to y'all on that. But um, start off with I personally feel that you cannot love someone that you don't trust. I feel like you can care for them deeply. I feel like you could have, if you guys remember from my last podcast, I think you could have a situational love. But I don't think that the true love, the love that you know, the unconditional love or the loyal love, I don't think any of that is possible if you don't trust somebody. And the reason being is because if you don't trust somebody, you're always like the way I move. I don't trust a soul. So even if I love you to death, I always have my eye on you. However, the more you love somebody, the less you have your eye on them. Like there's some people in my life who, you know, I could I won't say I fully trust like wholeheartedly, but I, I'm not worried about them doing no snake shit. Like I know that they're some very stand up, solid individuals. Right. Like, I'm not keeping my eye on them, so to speak. But there's a lot of people who I care about who I don't trust at all whatsoever. Like, I can put, you know, some some things into them. I could, you know, I could understand who they are. I could invest time and money. But there's always a limit because I don't know exactly where their head is at all times. Right? And I feel you cannot truly love somebody who you don't trust. So if you're, you know... I think the first downfall, the first pit stop of a relationship, right, to me is always as soon as you want to get that person's code to their phone, right? Now, the first thing a lot of people say is, um, you know, if you don't have nothing to hide and there's no reason to, you know, not want somebody to have your phone, which is true. You know what I mean? If only a person who is guilty is, is worried about a trial, right? However, if... You need the password to that person's phone or you have to go through their phone. Like one thing about me, I don't mind you asking to look at my phone for something or, you know, you know, it's different. Right. If you ask that person for their phone, you want to search something up real quick. You don't have yours or you want to look at, you know, how something works. You know, whatever the case may be, if there's actually a legitimate reason for you to look at my phone and cool or you want to be on my phone or something like that. Cool. But if you're just I want to go through your phone. Well, why? Like what the fuck? Like what? 
Like where it all of a sudden is what what happened in you know today's time or this week that all of a sudden you don't trust me enough to where you gotta go through my phone, you gotta look through all my messages, right? And I always found myself in past relationships that would happen, and I I really don't I I consider myself not a very insecure individual as far as when it comes to relationships, but I am petty, so I'll do something like I don't care to look through your phone, but since you asked to look through mine, well let me look at yours. Fuck it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. That's something that's that I feel like is the first piss stop. Because what happens is it starts with your phone, right? It starts with, all right, let me look through your phone. All right, you don't post me enough. All right, you know what? You need to change all your profile pictures to us. All right, you know what? I need you to block this person, block that person. Like, it just, it, it's, it's going to keep going until all of a sudden it's like, well, like, what? what is, like, you're, it's almost like an interrogation, a full-blown, like, you got to, who's calling us? Like, and it starts with, like, little, like, small little things like that. Who's texting us? Who's calling us? Shit like that. It's, it starts off as a joke, and then it starts to progressively get worse, right? And I'm going to be honest with you, like, from a male perspective, and some of y'all want to talk about y'all want a jealous girlfriend and all this other shit. I mean, she cares. Let me tell you something. That shit will get old very fast. If you're actually not doing anything, right? Now, if you actually out there cheating, then, you know what I'm saying, you you, do, you ducking and dodging anyway, so you're not going to really care. But if you're, if you're being faithful... And that same old bullshit keeps coming up over and over and over again. It's like you're on a f- like a full blown interrogation throughout the whole relationship. That's gonna get real old real fast, and you are gonna get tired of being around that person. It's, I trust me when I tell you, it's gonna get you mad. Like, you are gonna be like, yo, you know what? Fuck it. Or you are gonna at one point just be like, well, shit, I'm already on interrogation. I might as well go try it. There's some bad hoes I've been seeing that been eyeing me. <clears throat> That's exactly what's gonna go through your head. So it's like. You got to nip things like that in the bud. And, you know, there's a difference between jokes. But I think behind every joke is some truth in it. So when it starts off them jokes, who's testing us, who's calling us, you know, oh, you definitely don't like posting me on your Instagram, something like that. Like, they'll say stuff like that. You got to start to understand that, you know, take a joke, but start trying to nip shit like that in the bud before it gets too serious. I mean, because... Those insecurities would definitely destroy your relationship. And like I said, that's the first stop is, you know, the phones, right? And I've always said, you know, I feel like social media and, you know, cellular devices ruin a lot of relationships. But not because, you know, a lot of people talk about people need validation on social media and they don't want to be posted and stuff like that. Which I I loop that in with the insecurity thing, you know. So I'm not going to say that's why social media does it. But I think social media and phones do it. For the simple fact that you have constant access to other, to basically, I mean, it's going to go back to insecurities anyway, but you have constant access to other people's validation, right? When I say other people's validation, I mean, like, if you're a dude, per se, right? Let's say you're a dude, and let's say you used to be out here, you used to be making moves with different females. Every dude knows that females are very competitive, so if you... Like, if you was to go to a club, you went by yourself, you may get choosing, you might get, like, you may see a couple girls choosing here and there, like, two, maybe, like, four or five of them might look your way. You come in there with a bad joint, all of a sudden, every girl in there is looking at you. But that's not because something that you did, that's because it's competition with that bad joint you got on your arm, right? That's just how that turns out. However, right, on social media, now that competition is not just in the club, it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook, it's on Twitter, it's on Snapchat, it's on all these, uh, I ain't gonna say TikTok, goddamn, <laughs> but it's it's just on all these different websites, and now you're in, you find yourself in a constant competition, because people's gonna try to, you know, comment, they're gonna try to hit you up, they're gonna try to do a couple of things, and all this is gonna throw wrenches in your relationship. Right, that's why you see some people don't even post their relationship online. They might post one picture together, you know, once every few months or something like that, and they leave it at that because they don't want everybody in their in their business, you know. And that's just one aspect. Another one, if you got somebody who loves social media and social media is like a part of their life, you gonna see them everything that goes wrong in your relationship. They run into fucking Instagram or Facebook to talk about now. It's been a big rule of mine, and I'm sticking to it. If at any point in time shit go down between us two, now I can deal with uh, 
you know, girls like posting niggas ain't shit memes and shit like that when they get beef and whatever. You know what I mean? That could be taken in all type of contexts. I don't pay too much mind. But if you get on social media and start talking shit about me or something like that because of an argument or whatever the case may be, that's the end of that relationship. It's a wrap for that because that's... You're inviting people to, cause if I'm a dude and I'm trying to trying to smash my girl, you know what I mean. I'm a grimy nigga. Then as soon as y'all, I know like from personal experience, as soon as like a, a female is going through anything with their significant other, that's prime. Or the same thing goes for girls and guys. That's prime time to go in there and try to fuck that up, or go in there and try to do what you was trying to do. So that's that's something. If that's something that somebody has to do, that's the end of that relationship. I don't I don't play those type of games, right? But again, here this is where, you know, social media and phones come into play. You know, it, it social media and phones fuck up relationships from a lot of different aspects. A lot of it all you know directly correlates to validation. I'm actually gonna have a whole podcast on validation because I think I could go on about that forever. Right? But I'm talking about insecurities here, so I'm gonna get off of that a little bit. But I'm going to say ignoring your partner's insecurities is always going to be the doom of a relationship, right? And here's the thing, right? If you, so if you can realize, right, that somebody is not a, a personally a personally confident person, like they're always trying to find validation, they, they're very insecure, you cannot really fix that. I know everybody's looking at it from the standpoint of, well, their insecurities gonna be based on how you're acting in a relationship. There's nothing if you don't feel attractive, even if you value my opinion, there's nothing I can tell you to feel attractive. I may sit there and you may come out with a banging ass dress or something, and I might be like, damn, that dress is fire. You look good. And you may feel yourself for a minute, maybe an hour. And then in an hour, you may look in the mirror and notice that your nose is kind of funny looking to you. So you might be like insecure again. So that there's nothing I can say. There's nothing a, your significant other can say or do to make you secure. The same goes for a dude. If you got a real jealous, uh, insecure male. And I'm going to definitely say that if you have a insecurity in the men is like everybody's insecure. But jealousy in men is the number one sign of you going into being very feminine. Like, being super jealous, who's that, who you with, all that other shit, that's some very insecure feminine behavior, right? That's a that's like a red flag that somebody should always, if you're a female at least, you should always flag that 100% off gate. Because that, like I said, um, men who, who show feminine traits... That they they never turn out. It's always a mess. You know what I mean. These are the dudes that end up putting their hands on females and all types of shit, and they become controlling. Feminine traits in a in a male is never a good thing. You either gonna have you a, a straight up bitch where he doesn't want to talk back to you, or he's walking around with his head down damn near, or you are gonna get that dude who's trying to overcompensate, so he's just wilding out, putting his hands on people, all types of crazy shit. Is it's always a two way street with a very feminine man. So. And, like, again, this is some people notice this and they try to ignore it or they listen to social media and say that their man's supposed to be all jealous and all this other extra dumb shit. And they go with that. But you can't ignore these insecurities and you can't really fit them either. I mean, you can try uh, and it might work. You know what I mean? It's, it's situations I've had friends and they talked about their female, uh, you know, their girlfriends. And they say that their girlfriends help them become more secure in themselves. And it's, and it's possible. I, I haven't talked to any females that's felt that way. But I'm sure they're out there too. But you got to understand you're in for a long ride. You're in for a long investment. And if that shit don't work out, you're going to feel very drained. Um, I don't remember what podcast it was on. But I remember there was a podcast when I was talking about if you feel like you invested more in your relationship than you got back and you didn't feel like as though you received anything back in return or it wasn't a a, a learning experience for you. A lot of times that's because you tried to basically chain somebody or basically fit somebody who you had no business trying to fit, right? And a lot of that starts off with insecurities. You got somebody who's very insecure. I'm like, it's just a part of 
you know, and, and again, I want to touch it on this too. Everyone has an insecurity, right? Everyone. You know what I mean? No one is the most outstandingly confident. Now, I say I'm not very insecure in relationships, but I mean, in myself, I mean, if I was looking in the mirror, I'm definitely just flaws in my body that I don't like and things like that. Everybody has that. So that's normal. But a controlled issue is not an issue. I, there's, you may have some things about you that you're insecure about, you know what I mean? But if they're not dictating your life, that is there, it is what it is. You're human. You're a human being, right? But if your insecurities dictate, you know, how you interact with people, how you feel about yourself, like, for example, if I was to gain an extra, let's say I was to gain like an extra like 30 pounds, right? I'm not very secure when I'm fat. I don't feel very good about myself when I'm fat. So wearing certain clothes, going to certain places, taking pictures and shit like that. Like I notice, like whenever I get big, I don't take very many pictures. You're gonna be very inse- I'm I'm insecure about that. That's a problem. That means that it's dictating how I live my life now. So whereas if I'm in shape, I don't give a fuck who's trying to take a picture. I don't care where I go. I don't care what I'm wearing, how I look. When I'm big, I gotta wear something flashy. I gotta wear a whole bunch of stuff to make myself feel good. You know what I mean? So that's when you know that insecurity is a problem. So that's why I diet and I do the things I do and I fast and stuff like that. That's because I know that it's a detrimental problem. It's a detrimental insecurity when I get big. But again, a control issue is not an issue. Now, if you have that same, let's say we switch that to somebody else. To where your trust is, like, your insecurity and people loving you. And because of that, if you get into a relationship, you automatically f- you got to keep asking, you know, do you love me? Do you like me? Do you love me? Do you like me? You, you're never really sure about it. That can be an insecurity that's going to come an issue if it's constantly around, right? So, basically, I'm not saying that you guys should... um you know, because some of this is advice. I'm not saying that you guys should get rid of somebody who's insecure, but you need to just understand. You need to pay attention to all red flags, right? It needs to be a situation where you look at that person and then you sitting there, you're going through the pros and cons. All right. What are your problems, or your insecurities? How can I help you, you know, cope with them? And is it worth my time in trying to basically fix that person? You see what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we're not therapists, right? If we're not, you know, at the end of the day, I I, I like to bring this up. I brought it up in another podcast. Like Will and Jada, like Will Smith said in his um his little uh I think it was a vlog that he did. It was on Instagram, but he basically was like, "You're responsible for your happiness and nobody else." It is selfish and basically not realistic to think that somebody else can make you be happy. Which is the best truth. And the number one path to happiness in my in my eyes, in my opinion, is dealing with insecurities. I got to tell you, like I said, I got many insecurities. But none of them, if someone was to talk bad about them or talk shit about it, it it would flow off my chest. And I've gotten to the point where, like, my level of confidence where somebody might, you know, say something about, like... I don't know. Um, I guess one of my insecurities is probably like my like like I said like back of my head or something like that or or you know if I if I'm gaining weight, somebody it's to the point somebody may say something about it, <laughs> and I'll legit look at them and I'll look them up and down and I'll <laughs> be like, who the fuck are you? What are you looking at, bitch? I look good. The fuck is you talking about? Like is that's how that's how that swag. But when you deal with them insecurities, that's how your swag is gonna be, right? That's just how you're gonna carry yourself, like. You feel a way about it. You know what I mean? You may say something about it. You may delete a picture or something like that if you took it and it shows or whatever the case may be. But for the most part, you like, man, I know I look good. You know what I mean? I, I know who I am. And that's what happens when you deal with some of these insecurities. And it takes a long time and a lot of different things to get through that, you know, and to become that confident in yourself. So I would definitely say, you know, you really need to take a look at that person and look at yourself also, you know, because you, you may have something that's changing you and decide whether or not those insecurities are going to hinder your relationship later on. Because I, I personally feel that a long-term relationship, like I said, it starts with that fucking phone. It starts there and it starts to spiral into other shit. And after a while, if you get into a relationship, once it gets more than like a year and a half, a year, something like that, 
they'll slowly start leaking out and you'll find yourself in some wild predicaments. And, you know, I feel as though understanding who you are as an individual is the first step in even trying to get involved with somebody. You got to love yourself before you love anybody else. A hundred percent. There's no way around it. You know, you can sit there and say, I'm going to find somebody who could fit me or I need a Somebody who's gonna help build me up and all this other shit. Nah, bro. You gotta you gotta fit yourself before anything else. Before you can get with somebody else. Or else this is gonna be a, a total It's gonna start off good. The honeymoon phase is gonna be good, but it's gonna spiral into a whole bunch of And the crazy thing is a lot of people, I feel like a lot of relationships that end in train wrecks is just because after a while, it's almost like the military. I feel like the military and sports is gonna always really show your flaws on the biggest stage possible and that's what happens with relationships everything that's a flaw in you is going to come out tenfold and it's gonna it's gonna be scary to look at you know what i mean we all have different flaws about us you may not know them they're gonna come out tenfold i know uh past relationships definitely showed me that i was kind of um not anymore but i was definitely way too overly emotionally invested into people you know what i'm saying i i grew up around women so, up and I mean, now I know I control this shit, but beforehand, you know what I mean, certain things, would I would be very, um, was it empathetic? <laughs> I think, I guess it's very empathetic. I was very uh, controlled by women's emotions. It was certain things I had to, you know, I couldn't just brush them off my shoulders and things like that. And that would cause problems because, again, that would turn me, start making me very feminine. But you learn them and you learn to control them. You learn different ways to go about it. But... In the midst of it, I'm saying right now, and all dudes can kind of contest it, is you'll be in a relationship, and you like, but you're not listening to me. It just sucks. And then you sitting there, you're like, Yo, what the fuck is wrong with me, bro? I sound like a bitch right now. Like, <laughs> And I swear to God, you, you'll be in the middle of, of, the, of the argument or something like that, and you're trying to get your point across, and you may, and it, it might really cross your mind like, yo, why am I talking like this? Why do I feel so goddamn emotional? Like it's, and, and it 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 goes just like that. And that shit is um like after the fact, it's kind of embarrassing. Like looking back on it, I look at some of the, like the way I was talking and how goddamn passionately and sad I was. I'm like, goddamn, I was acting like a bitch. But that's, you know what I mean? That's just a part of dealing with certain flaws that you have. And relationships are definitely gonna show that on the highest stage. And you can either do something about it or it's going to keep following you everywhere you go. But Reapers, man, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this. You know, I'm definitely trying to keep my word about posting more podcasts. Man, I know I've been slacking. Uh, my content definitely needs to get to get up. So this is Devontae. This is Reaper Training. We don't chase dreams. We hunt goals. Y'all be easy. The next uh, podcast that we will be posting um think we're gonna go back into the motivation we may talk about the leadership but i also want to talk about this coronavirus stuff because i definitely have <laughs> some ideas on that so y'all be easy man i'll catch you on this time